We've got a world silver medalist here, folks, joining us from Tokyo, Japan, one-on-one -on -one with the 2022 Judo World Silver Medalist in the under 100 kilogram division, Mr. Kyle Reese. How are you doing, Kyle? Um, good, a bit tired, but um, rested. Well, congratulations on your uh, epic performance at, at the Judo Worlds. I'm, I'm sure you're, you, you might be tired and, and, and well rested, as, as you mentioned, but you must be feeling good after your, your epic performance. Yes, actually, yeah. Um, I wasn't doing for quite a while, and I, I was able to perform pretty well, and I got a big comeback, so I'm very happy for that. Right on. Let's dive right into it. Seven days ago, uh, obviously, you, you had made the, the podium, and some people mm -hmm. describe it as one of the best days of your judo career. How would you mm -hmm. sum up the entire experience at the Judo World Championship in, in Tashkent, Uzbekistan? Um, so can you say that again? Like how sure. did I? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. How so people are describing it as one of mm -hmm. the best, you know, days of your judo career. How would mm -hmm. you how would you sum up the entire experience? Sum up. That means how, how would you how would you summarize it? How would you describe it if you if you were to oh. If if you were gonna if you were if you were gonna draft a tweet like let's say a mm -hmm. short tweet about mm -hmm. the entire experience what would you tweet out? Um. Well, I um. That's hard. Uh, it was a great day for me. Like I really didn't expect um to myself that I would do that well, actually. And <clears throat> but I was pretty relaxed. I wasn't like thinking too much. I was. Like very focused on what should I do and everything, so I really had a good um, concentration to uh, the judo, the performance I did. Right on. Now, obviously, your your, your fellow teammates also, uh, you know, they they made the podium. I'm speaking about Boboshman Pinar. She got a silver medal. Yeah. She got a silver medal. And mm -hmm. Klinkite got a bronze, and the team overall performed really well. Two part question for you What does this collective achievement mean for Judo Canada and its athletes? Um, so, my English is not the best, but um, I don't know. I think it means a lot. <clears throat> like, we didn't have that much um, world medalist, and at this competition, we, we already have three. So I think the Judo Canada is doing very well. And um, I think it's, it's uh, um, from now on, the Judo Canada will get more, more athletes that will get in the podium in the world championships. And a follow-up for, for you, obviously Judo is an individual sport. And I, I'm wondering, mm -hmm. you guys are a team. How close is the team in supporting each other, especially at, at these major tournaments um like <clears throat> everybody's very like supportive of uh other teammates like um um like we warm up together we <clears throat> we teach each other some moves and if we know the opponent we um try to tell them how to avoid their technique and stuff so like we're pretty like, um it's not a big team like like Japan, they have like a huge team, so many judokas. But um, Judo Canada, we're like a smaller team. So I think we're like more like connected and like we um, talk more and think we're like a, more like a team. Right on. Now, now I'm going to we're, we're going to talk about your matches. We're going to dive right into it. And I'm hoping okay. to hear your analysis. I, I want to hear some details of, about each of, of your match, starting okay. each of your matches, excuse me, starting off with your first opponent from Hungary, uh, Sergenix. Mm -hmm. If you could tell us a little bit about this match, how you won, and any significant moments that, that, that you want to share with us. Um, well, <clears throat> I fought with him once and I, I lost the last time. So um, he has this one move that he's, uh, very good at so um like I knew he's he was going to try to do that like 
like right right away. So I was waiting for um, I was kind of waiting for it, and he came for it. So I kind of blocked it, and that kind of made me feel better because um, I was able to block it. Right. And after that, I just went with the flow. Like um, I didn't think too much, and that was pretty good. I. Do you, do you want to describe the, the move you're referring to that that, that he did uh, that, that he performed on you last time? Um, how how would you describe it? The last fight I had with him. Correct. Yeah. Um, he had this. Um, he go over my shoulder, right? And he he kind of pulls me in and he flips me. So he's very good at that, and I got Ippon like. He threw me in like um uh like a minute and a half the last time I fought with him. Okay. So I was kind of on the guard for that move. Now you mentioned that uh, you just went you went with the flow, right? You didn't yep. think too much. How mm -hmm. important is that for you to just go with the flow uh, as opposed to? start thinking about this that and the other can, can you elaborate on that for us the the importance of just going with the flow and, and and picking up the pace as as you see fit um i think um to think will be before the fight i think a lot how to go which way to go and when it starts i i will feel them with my grip and then i i am thinking but like um, I try to go with how, how I felt, I feel when I have the grip. So like, maybe, um, 70% flow, 30% thinking during the fight. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you beat him and you move on now to, to round number two against an opponent from Slovakia. His name is Matas Seji, I hope I'm not mispronouncing names here, folks. So I apologize if, <laughs> <laughs> if I am. <laughs> but uh, give us again, uh, give us a detailed summary uh, against this opponent here. I think this was the first time you you fought him, and I think you you finished him rather quickly. Yeah. Um. Actually, this time I was thinking a bit more because he was more on the guard. So I needed to think how to um, get him off of guard and throw him. And um, I got him with uh, Uchimata. It's like um, I put my one leg in and like um, push him up and right. then like throw him. And so I needed to do like some like um, mislead, like I go once and go back and do one more time and try to get him like loose, loosen up because he was like stiff, stiff trying to avoid my um, attacks. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking more at that fight. Now your coach, what, what was your coach telling you going into round number two? What, what, uh, what sort of advice for, from what you recall, was there an overall game plan or something that, that that he said for you to focus on or anything yeah. to that effect? The second fight was um he does um like um drop stuff. He he go he comes under my like legs and tried to throw me from there. So my coach told me not to like lean too forward and go after him. They like, pull him more towards me. Mm -hmm. So and actually, that really worked, and that's how I got him off of um, guard and throw him. So it was a good game plan. From there, you move you move on to, to round number three against a Mongolian by the name of mm -hmm. Bat Huyag. Uh, mm -hmm. Give us a, a summary of this match. Again, this is a very very quick match. I believe it's only twenty seconds. Uh, you you yeah. beat him rather quickly yet again. Uh, go ahead. Um, this one, um, this one, it, it was like mostly the flow when I grabbed him. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't feel that stiff and strong. So I think he didn't really know me. I, I don't think he saw I would be strong. And I think he was like off guard and everything. 
So okay. that was just my moment to go. And I felt like he was very leaning like up this way, so the back will work. So I just tilt him backwards and throw him. And I believe that this was the first time you competed against him, correct? Yes, yes. So what, first time. what can you tell us about M Mongolian fighters? I, kn I know this is a generalization, but as far as M Mongolian judo, uh, generally, because you mentioned that when you grabbed him, you didn't feel much, much power. Are, are, are you implying that most of the time the Mongolians are very strong right from the get-go? Yes, um, there was um, <clears throat> one Mongolian, um, um, I forgot his name. Um, he was very strong. He got uh, silver in the Olympics. Um, well, anyways, um, I fought with him when I was like 20 or 21, and his like, power was so strong, I couldn't mm. do anything. And since then, in my image, the um, Mongolians are like very stiff, very um, strong, uh, strong uh, uke, uke yeah. like um, yeah, it's very hard to stro uh, throw, get him off guard. So I was um, expecting like powerful judo mm -hmm. from the Mongolian, but I think he, yeah. As I said, I don't think he saw I would be strong or he, oh, he, he knows you're strong now, my friend. He just <laughs> <it. laughs> sorry. I think he knows that. And if he's watching, I, yeah. I, I, I think he'll I think the next time if you ever cross paths with him, he, he, he won't underestimate your uh, yeah. your power. You got rid of him rather quickly in 20 yeah. seconds. And from there, you move on to the quarterfinals going from Mongolian against the Mongolian to a Georgian, which uh, is, is an even tougher scenario i know i'm generalizing but we all know M M mongolians are incredibly strong at judo and so are the georgians you went up against uh sulamanitse break it down for us to tell us about this match here in the quarterfinals actually what was the mood going into this to to going into this match right now you've you've won three in a row you're going in into your fourth match how are you feeling at this moment um <clears throat> well um I, I knew him. I knew what kind of judo he does, but I never fought with him, and not not even in uh, training camp. So um, I really didn't know him. But with my coach, we were talking like, don't let him like close to me because he'll be very strong and like he has so much good techniques when he's like close to me. So I needed to get my hands out and get the distance. And um, they get tired. They come um, powerful judoka gets tired uh, like faster. Right. So um, that was the plan to get get him tired and get him like more and try to get him at like um, later on. That was the kind of the plan with my coach. Right. And. Um, he uh it, re it actually worked he was like pretty tired at the like um later on right. so that's how that's how i got um i threw him right i believe he threw you first right yes yes he was and, and, um yeah can, can you explain how how he threw you can you set up that yeah, sequence for us yeah first like the first um couple of times i was able to get my distance but like um the one time he he avoided my um, hand and he got my back and he was very close to me. And then he did his um, move and I, I wasn't able to avoid it and I got thrown. But I was able to stop it with Wazali. So I, I still had a chance and I knew he was getting tired. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't too disappointed that I got, I got thrown. Right, I think you threw him maybe thirty seconds after, right, or or, or something to to yeah, that effect, I think, or, or just under yeah, like a minute. a minute after or something. Right, yeah. right, and and from there you threw him and and you pinned him, right? You, you pinned him. Yeah. Was, was, was it coming? And it's funny because if you go back and you watch the matches, obviously you you've watched the matches, you've watched your, your yeah. matches, yeah. You can hear your coach 
I believe it's Antoine Valafortier. Yeah. I, I think it's him. It's got to be him. Yeah. I don't think he was there. I think he I, was he was he was he sitting there or was he because like we couldn't see him. Um, on the camera. Yeah. Um. Actually, my judo gi. My white one wasn't um, able. I couldn't wear it for the fight. Okay. Okay. So I needed to borrow um, judo gi from uh, the IJF. And when you do that, you're not um, the coach is not able to go in the coach box. Okay. Well, you know what, Antoine Valafortier's voice carries because we can hear him <laughs> loud and clear, clear <laughs> like no, a madman, which was awesome, by the way, which, yeah. which was great because he's like. <laughs> And it's like it's it's uh, it's hilarious, but it goes to show uh, how much passion and and, mm -hmm. and energy he has. Definitely. Obviously, yeah. uh, trying to support you, and and we see a lot of that energy throughout uh, the, the the tournaments, particularly for for your matches. So you, you beat uh, the Georgian, and from here you move on now to to fight uh, the Azerbaijani Kotsoyev mm -hmm. uh, in the semifinals. Break down this match for us. I believe, ha have you fought him before? No, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, once. Oh, you fought him once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can you break down this match for us? Yeah. Um, this uh, game plan was like, similar with the Georgian to avoid him, to get close, because he's pretty powerful when he gets close. And same as the Georgian, he gets tired, so try to throw him like later on. So um, it was completely the same. He, I was avoiding him pretty well, but one time he got me, <clears throat> he got my arm down, and he got the, he got close to me, and I got thrown. Mm. But uh, <laughs> again, I was able to stop him by like Wazali. So I still had a chance to get back, and um, so I wasn't that uh, disappointed again of losing the point. So it was it was like a very similar match as uh, Georgian, right? It, he he did take you down first. I think it was with yeah. with a uh, <coughs> Sumigaishi, yeah. And and I believe he tries to do the same technique again. Uh, yeah. Well, a variation of it. Maybe he tries to do it again, thinking uh, he's going to get it, but but you you cleverly you know land accordingly and and, and avoid mm -hmm. that. And from there, can you can you tell us how you 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 pinned him? Obviously, you threw him and you pinned him. But how, how did you throw him there? Can can you break that down for us, please? Um, um, I saw him getting tired and tired. But like, if you do like a bad attack, you get this shido, like a penalty. Right. And I felt he didn't want to get the penalty, so he was like not doing. A good um, technique, but he wasn't falling. So when you do that, you don't get the penalty that easy. But like you kind of get off guard because like, you try to throw, and there's a moment that you come back up. And that was the moment um, I was able to catch and throw. And <laughs> like the from the last fight, I was like. Um, like pinning down was pretty like it was in my move, so it was easy to like pin him down right away. Right, you you pin him down here, and obviously you know you 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 win this match, which basically leads you to the, to the gold medal match. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, after beating the Azerbaijani, what was the mood like uh, after that? How how were you feeling going into? into the gold medal match what what, what was uh, running what were some of the thoughts were running through your head Kyle well like <clears throat> like some of my feelings was like very happy because it was my first medal and I it's already it would be the gold or silver so I was already happy about it but right. I didn't want to feel that way because it it will um it's uh, it will make me not focus, yeah? right. Okay, like I was very focused at that day. I was like, um, pretty right on with like all the moves and all the judo I was doing. So I didn't want to let that go. So I didn't want to feel that happy yet. Mm. So I'm trying to make myself calm down, 
and try to just focus <coughs> like like all the every other fight that I had. So I wasn't thinking of too much about winning the gold or like being happy with silver. I was just like thinking about the fight I would do with this um Uzbekistan. So I was trying to not lose my focus. Now, Kyle, it, 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 it sounds to me like you're generally a very calm person. Like, I, I don't know you. Obviously, I've, I've seen you fight. I, I don't know you personally. But you seem like a very relaxed, calm person. H- how, do you, how do you get even calmer than, than you are now? In, in terms of, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, what exactly do you do? Is there, is there a certain routine that, that you do to, to remain calm? Not just calm, but calm and focused. Well, what, what can you share with us in terms of your your approach to 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 remaining that calm and focused especially leading into this gold medal match um sorry i, I know it's a personal question i i'm, I'm just no, curious no, no. to um, know because it's really important for us to to understand your your, your mindset going into this match mm-hmm. um actually i don't have any routines actually um i try not to make a routine because um i get a bit stressed when I feel like I have, I have to do this, I have to like be like this way. Mm. So, um, I, mm, it's hard. I try, I get nervous. Like, of course, like it's the, um, gold match, but I don't, I don't try to like make that calm. Like, I think, the, um, nervousness is good for you, good for the performance. Oh, wow. So, Interesting. I try to I try to feel it a bit more. Okay. Yeah. I try not to relax too much. It like I don't know. I lose focus when I relax too much. Like mm-hmm. being being happy and everything makes me kind of like um lose my focus. And I don't think that goes well with with me. I think it really depends how you are, what kind of person you are. Absolutely, yeah. and there's. I think there's so many ways to do a good performance, and my way is to be a bit nervous, not too much, but try not. I I won't try to, like, um. I I don't try to be calm. I just try to focus, and I guess it looks like I'm calm, but um, yeah, it's it's just like being focus and everything it's, it's really interesting as, as you're describing this you, you you're saying you use uh the nerves that you feel obviously people feel nervous right when they're competing you use that as a, as fuel almost to to kind of to 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 sense that that emotion but still remain focused and calm it's it's really interesting because um, you know, in the lead up to, to the gold medal match, when we see you guys walking out yourself and your coach, I don't know if mm-hmm. you, well, you were there, of course you saw this, you know what I'm saying? This is, <laughs> this is your match, but there's a really cool clip, um, that you see when, uh, I mean the, like when you, you and you're both walking out, right. There's one moment about five seconds where you're walking with your coach and both of you are walking side by side and you're walking at the same rhythm and pace and you're both looking like down. And it's oh. interesting because like you're both kind of like focusing. And, 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 and the reason why I mentioned this, because it's a, it's a very powerful visual in the sense, because it's as if like both of you guys know this is it. This is the gold medal match. You've got your, your coach beside you, who's a former competitor himself, right? This is his first time, you know, c- coaching the, the team at, at, the, at the world championships. And um, I saw that clip and I had to rewind it a few times to see it again because it was spectacular. It was almost like, like um, I, I don't know how, how else to describe it, but people need to go see it because it's, it, it's quite a picture and, and quite a moment when you see uh, a coach and, and a competitor walking down, you know, and, and feeling all that pressure of the gold medal match. What were you thinking as you were walking there? What, obviously you were feeling nervous, but w- what else were you thinking? What was your game plan going into this match against uh, two? I call him Turbo, but his name is T- Turaboyev from Turaboyev. Uzbekistan, who's an incredible, um, 
you know, congratulations to him. Obviously, he ended up winning the gold medal, and we're going to get into into that. But uh, tell us, what was the mood going into this match? Because the fans, the the, the fans there in in Tashkent were incredibly enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. They had music, you know, yeah. playing locally, and and it was incredible. I, I was hearing yeah. that. I'm like, oh my goodness, this, this these musicians should be traveling to every IGF <laughs> event. I'm serious. It was it was incredible. It, it, was, it was so it was it was a beautiful moment. You know, you hear the music, you feel the music. And obviously it's it's part of, of their culture as a way to kind of motivate and, and inspire, uh, you know, people at, at, at various events, if it's judo and boxing and, and so on. But like, what was the mood like there for you uh, as you guys, as you were walking down to, to, to the match? Um, like inside me was um, the same. I was trying to just focus up for the fight and I did hear all the music and everything but um it didn't really disturb me or I didn't really um really care about it right. like it was it was just a fight so I really had a good concentration that day and I had it at the finals too so um yeah, I saw it was like um, I still have the um, focus from all the fights I did because it, it get we have like two or three hours until the finals, right? So I was a bit like um scared. I don't I didn't want to lose my focus, mm -hmm. but when I was walking down, it was um I felt I still had it. So that was what I was thinking when I was walking down. I, I'm sorry if if I keep asking you the same question over and over again, but no problem. But, but sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm really curious to know, you know, in those blocks of time that you guys have, those two three hours, which probably feel like twenty four hours, right? Because it's <laughs> it's, it's it's so long. What yeah. what exactly do you do during that time? And 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 how do you keep yourself, um, as you mentioned, focused? How how do you do you isolate yourself from from people? Do you like you know, what 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 did you do? I guess is is what I'm what I'm asking here. Um, not much. Um, I just lay down, close my eyes, and sometimes I sleep. But this time I wasn't able to sleep. I was awake the whole time, hmm. and I drink drink a lot, so I needed to go pee a lot. So I was sick. I was right. peeing a lot, mm -hmm. yeah. And somebody comes and talks to me, and I talk, talk a bit. Are you ever I like, don't, don't I, talk to me, leave me alone, no, I'm no. trying to focus? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I try not to do that. Like, okay. when, you, when I do that, I get a bit more nervous. Mm. So, yeah. And music, too, it isolates me. So it kind of makes me more think about the fight and think too much. So I don't really listen to too much music. I just close my eyes, lay down. If somebody comes to talk to me, talk to them. If I get hungry, eat a bit. Mm. And yeah, just relax, try to relax and not too much. Right. In, in, uh, in the broadcast that we were watching here in Canada, we, we could hear the, the, the commentators, you know, obviously were very enthusiastic about this match for, for a variety of reasons, as they were for the, throughout the entire tournament. It was a very entertaining world championship. And particularly this match, the way it, uh, it unfolded was rather dramatic. Set it up for us. Break down the... the the match and and we'll, we'll get into some of the the drama if if you don't mind yeah no problem um <clears throat> well the game plan was to um well he doesn't he doesn't um do like a normal judo he doesn't grip he if he gets a grip he goes over at the other side and he does that both ways so uh it didn't really matter which way i go from he would do the same move. Right. So I just, and I do lefty. So first I wanted to get my right hand on him and then get my left hand and try to throw him. 
And first it was tough to do it because he was like strong and um, not tired and like aggressive and everything. But um, I didn't feel, feel like I was going to get thrown by him. The, the move that he does, um, if you don't lean forward or go back too far, um, it doesn't really do much to you. So I just try to keep my posture good and avoid getting thrown. Mm. And he, when he got he, when he starts to get tired, I was able to get my right hand and start to do my judo. But um, and he got two penalty. And in the golden score, I was I wasn't that tired yet, and he looked very tired. So. Right. Um, and the third penalty wasn't coming, so I thought I needed to throw him. And I tried to, um, like, go for it. So I, I kind of, like, overwent mm. to right. grab him. Right. And then he did his move. So I was going to avoid it again. Then he did this other way. He... He was always doing it in the front way, right? But the last time he came backwards, and I, I didn't see that coming, and that's what I. That's how I got thrown. That was like a um, very smart and um, great move that he did. Yeah, he certainly he he caught you by surprise there, and it's interesting too yeah. because the way the the commentators were setting it up, I I don't know if if you heard this, but they were basically. They were comparing your style of judo. They were describing it as, quote, beautiful judo versus okay. his style of judo, which they described as, as unusual um, yes. <laughs> judo, as, as you mentioned, because of, of his memory. But it's interesting because Turboyev, uh, you know, he's pro like, I think he's almost like two meters tall, right? He's like yeah. six six or something like that. And his, like his reach, his arm, uh, his, his reach. I, I don't know if, if that data is available. I, I don't think the, those stats are usually um, made available on, on the IGF site, correct me if I'm wrong, but he he has tremendously long arms, right? And legs, obviously he's 6'6". Six, six. He could be a volleyball player, a basketball player, <laughs> you know, a, a, he could be a swimmer. <laughs> But but yeah. he knows how, how to use that to, to his advantage. Yeah. And and what are your thoughts of this description as uh, unusual judo? Do, do you, when you hear that, what does that mean? Uh, like unusual judo? Yeah, because they described his style and his approach as uh, unusual judo, whereas yours is is definitely more what they describe as beautiful judo. I guess more traditional, right? In 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 in, in that sense, when, when when you hear of unusual judo, what 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 are your thoughts in, in regards to unusual judo? Uh, well, there's um, there's so many unusual judos in the world, and I think it's a great thing. Like I think there should be like all kinds of judo, and like I have this, they call the beautiful judo. I, I I got it in Japan. Well, the Japan Japan is the um, they made the judo, so right. they have this like um, particular way to train and teach. So I really respect that too, and I I also respect all the um, unusual judo because they needed to think and they needed to train hard to use it. And that's not an easy thing to do. So um, I think it's a um, great thing to have it, all kinds of judo. It's just hard to um, try to throw people like unusual judo because right. you have to get used to it. So, yeah. You know what? A, I, I, I really appreciate what, what you're saying there. It's, it's, it's very interesting points. And, and you know, for, for fans of, of the sport and, and combat sports in general, I think the clash of style when you have, you know, traditional or what's referred as mm -hmm. beautiful judo versus unusual judo makes for very entertaining matches mm -hmm. like this one, because this match was 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 awesome. You know, I mean, 
Of course, there, there was some controversy, I suppose. Um, I, I don't know if, if you know, there, there, there was some controversy with, with you know, the cross grip. He, he had that for, for too long. And I, I believe the commentators were saying that it should be one sheet or a piece, right, for, for, for you and, and, and him. And I mean, if you go back and, and you watch it, you were there, of course, you know, I mean, it, it was it was a, quite an awkward moment that no call was made. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting, too, because uh, I, I went online because, you know, the, the commentators were very vocal about that. I went online, which is great, by the way. I think it, it's great to have uh, honest commentators who, mm -hmm. who call things out. Uh, I went online and I went to, to see, uh, I went to find the match, but hear commentary in a different language. And I found it in okay. Spanish. I found the oh, commentary okay. in Spanish. I don't speak Spanish, uh, but but even even there you could hear uh that that the commentators I, I i speak french so it's 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 a latin language and and you know i'm uh, you know i don't speak spanish but what i'm saying is i you could hear the confusion in regards to hey what why isn't this a, a penalty well, well why isn't it a, sh a shido you know what i'm saying so so it, yeah. it's it's clear that uh that uh, people were were questioning that uh, commentators and and fans of course alike were, were questioning why the, the, the Shido wasn't called. At the end of the day, it's interesting to note that in your match, you didn't, um, you were very calm, you were very composed, you were very professional and very respectful because it's not like you complained and whined. Like in other sports, in other combat sports, you, you, you see, you know, uh, athletes and competitors complain to, to to the referee we didn't see any of that from you you know you truly re respected your your art form and, and your sport of, of judo you you know what i'm saying and it was cool yeah, yeah. to see in fact the way the match ended was in in was spectacular because we see sportsmanship like the demonstration of um a great display of sportsmanship you know where 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 he congratulates you obviously for your great effort and and he 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 had a great moment in his hometown in his in his country and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of maturity and professionalism uh, to, to, to do that on, on your part, because I think people could have complained, they could have protested it, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, uh, but, yeah. but you, you, were, um, you were very respectful, and, and I think that that's very honorable, and I think, I, I think that's what this, the sport of judo loves to see, obviously. So, you know, you, you end up losing this match, but you you get the silver medal and 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 this is a, a major moment for you i would imagine in your career uh mm -hmm. what was when when you think to about this moment what do you think this moment means for you and your career you know winning the silver medal uh, at the world championships um well i um i hope um this moment will be the moment that uh, I will start being the champion. Like, um, <clears throat> I was sad and happy and it confused at the same, <clears throat> same time, that time, right. at that moment. Um, as you say, I tried to be mature, like, but inside of me, I, I was thinking uh, it was a shido. You know, but right, like, um, that is judo, and I do. Um, I kind of understood because he had a good throw, and he came to the finals. I can't. I did a good throw, and I came to the finals. And I know they want to see um, final ending with a throw. Right. So like, um, I wasn't too upset. I did. I did understand. So, oh, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I guess ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you you you're a world champion. You're you're you're, you're silver medalist, right? And mm -hmm. and and in your journey in the sport, what does this chapter in the book that is, you know, Kyle Reyes judo? What does the chat? What does this chapter and, and achievement mean for you? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, no problem. Yeah. I I think I hope this uh, moment will will be the start of the um, the way to be the champion. I I was 
after the fight, I was um, sad and happy and, and everything. But right. now I kind of feel confident a bit because I was able to go to the final at the Worlds, got the silver. So I want to keep on showing my judo, my um, and become the champion. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I want to ask you in, in terms of having your your coach there on on, on this on, on this special day. What, what was it like having Antoine Valois Fortier as as your coach there d- during the tournament? Who, by the way, during your match, I don't know if, if you saw on camera, he was shaking like like like. You know, <laughs> I know. It was, and, and hey, I, I'm I'm just saying that was him and everyone in Canada that that, that follows the sport was probably in the same state of, of, of energy, very, very frantic and, and very excited because this is the gold medal match. This is a big moment for you and, and, and the sport. And he was very nervous. And what, what was it like having him there coaching you at, at that moment in um, your corner? Um, it, he, um, it really helped me. Like, um, I really like how he coaches and how his passion and um, how he treats the athletes. And I really, uh, really like him in person too. So it was very nice having him on the corner. It really um, helped me and they like, pushed me. So I really liked him in the coach box. Now I have a few more questions to ask you. I, I know you, you know, you're, you're leaving today for for the next tournament. So I really appreciate the time you, you're giving me. Uh, if you can give me another 15 minutes, that would be great. I'm I'm okay. curious to know what, and and this is a tough question, Kyle. And if if it's too hard okay. to answer, we can skip it. What factors okay. do you think contributed to you having such an incredible day? At, at the world what would you say what what series of, of factors do you think contributed uh to, to such a successful series of moments uh it means what made this good day yeah yeah and i know it's it's very hard to answer obviously because there's many many factors you know you yeah. you, you performed you had an amazing day what contributed to 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 that sort of energy um well <clears throat> I'm getting old. Um, I'm 29, and in judo, 29 is um, getting pretty old. Especially in Japan, like all the um, young kids get stronger and stronger. So, um, like, I was thinking to end my career if I didn't do the good do good this year. So, like, um. I tried all uh, like many stuff like um like tried to do uh, I tried I tried it a new gym to go I I wasn't drinking too much I didn't drink much um this year and I tried to be healthy uh, what to eat and everything I I my mindset they kind of shift because mm-hmm. I I thought it might be my last year doing judo, and um, yeah, I there's so many as you as you said there's so many things that I change. I can't say all of it, but I think that was like the one mind change made this happen. I think that's very very interesting. The the the, the shift in in thinking and. And the mindset, as you described, I'm curious. You know, you're you're, you're Canadian living in, in Japan. Tell us about that in relation to your judo development and training and overall living. What's what's it like living in Japan and and training the sport there? Um, well, actually, I haven't lived in Canada for long, so I can't really um, how do you compare. say C- com- compare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Japan. <clears throat> they're very strict in practice like my high school university practice was like 
I didn't have any day off. Um, every day training, every every like from morning and nighttime, and um, it's a pretty tough um, practice over here. And so you don't get to I, part, you don't get to party much. No, not not much. <laughs> <laughs> You're too tired. <laughs> But like actually, I'm um I already graduated my university and I work at the company and okay. I work half a day and I train half a day. Nice. So I don't do much as I used to do. But that kind of made me think how to practice. And the, in Japan, you have so many places you can practice. Right. There's um I don't think you would know, but there's um. Tokai University of Tokai and Japan University and there's so many places that you can go. Mm. So it's um it's a good environment to practice. So like compared to Canada, Canada like there's not too much to practice with. Right. So yeah, it's a very good environment to do judo here. But what? a bit sorry, but go ahead. But it's a bit tough. That, that's it. Yeah. It's it's it, tough in terms of uh, just the, the overall the the volume of competitors and the level of competition, or tough in terms of how you train, or both maybe. Um, both, yeah. Mm. So I mean, it's 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 an ideal environment, though. I I would imagine, obviously, people come from all over the world to to train yeah. there, right? So it's it's an ideal environment. I'm curious to know what got you hooked into judo competition. Uh, and and this pursuit of, of of greatness in terms of making the podium. What what got you hooked into that? Uh, why did I start judo? Yes, but oh. but yes. Well, why, why did you start judo? But why did you also start competing judo, uh, especially oh. uh, all, all the way at, at at this high level? Um, um, in Japan, when you go up to junior high school, you kind of choose what to do. Um, they have they call it bukats, and the school after school you go to the bukats, and you can choose from sports or art or music, and you kind of have to do something. You mm -hmm. don't have to, but like most of the people does something at that school. So um, I needed to choose from something, and I chose uh, sports. But I really hated running. Mm. So like no basketball, no soccer. I tried tennis, but it was too much running. So and my friend did judo. So I tried out judo, and I liked it. So I, I started going to the judo club. Right, so you started judo at the age of 12, right? Yeah. At 12. Now, I'm curious to know, like, uh, you and Sh Shadi Al-Nahas, you compete in the same weight division. Uh, mm -hmm. What are your thoughts of on, on Shadi uh, as, as a competitor? What, what do you think about him and his judo? Oh, um, he's a great guy, and his judo is, um, I think you can call it um, oh, unusual judo, you say? Like yeah. he has this like um great moves that you can't really expect from expect. Mm. Like um like he really um teaches me a lot. Like I, it's so much to learn from him. Um, I I really respect and like his judo. I try I try to do the same move, but it doesn't it doesn't turn out the turn out the same, but. So, I think he's a great player. Right. I mean, he's, you, you know, I, I think the people are using unusual judo as term. I think I, I see it more as like creative and innovative, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. judo. And, and it's, it's very entertaining to, to watch. And, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of it, uh, I, you know, in terms of like highlight real sort of judo. It's, it's, it's very mm -hmm. dynamic and explosive. Yeah, dynamic. I wonder, 
Yeah, b- big time and, and powerful. It's almost like, I think sometimes when he throws people, it's almost like he's slam dunking a basket. Yeah, yeah, I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It has that impact, you know? Yeah. Um, two, three more questions for you. This is a two-part question. What annoys you the most about the sport of judo? And what do you love the most about it? What annoys you? What, what irritates you the most about the sport? And the opposite of that, what, what do you, you know, love the most about it? Um, well, what annoys me is um, it's a contact in, sport. In, in interviews sport. like this? No, just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's my first time doing. No, no, brother, you, you're doing great, brother. You're doing great. No, no, it's, it's, it's all good. It's all. I, I was just joking. I was just joking. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, it's a contact sport, so it's um, it's a high risk of getting injured. Right. And I I had uh, big injuries, and I did some surgeries. Mm. So those times you get like pretty down like right it it really feels um like you you don't like the sports and it's too much but like <clears throat> what i love about it is um it's so creative you mm. can do so much through judo and you can make good friends out of it and um it's good to know yourself too like when you when you do a competition you get nervous that's knowing yourself too right it's like um you can learn a lot a lots of things about yourself too like doing judo so i don't know i just like doing judo and like finding out new stuff trying to do new things make new friends it's just um that's what I like about judo. And it's it's very cool because you get to compete all over the world, right? And you see yeah. all, all these different cultures. It's it's incredible. Yeah. And and the tournaments as fans, we, we get to see uh and, and and hear about, you know, there's people from all over there, uh, all over the world there watching. So it's it's a really interesting mosaic of cultures and and experience. Want to go back to your point about injuries. I think most recently you had a knee injury, correct? Um what was elbow. it? Pardon? The, elbow? Yeah, elbow, yeah. The elbow, okay. nearest is elbow, yeah. Okay. And how, how are you feeling uh today now? Because you're 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 going to, to another uh tournament in in uh in, in the Middle East. How, how how are you feeling? Um feeling good. Um not too nervous. And like everybody asked me, are you like pressured because you got the silver your next fight will be pretty um pressured and are you nervous but i don't really feel that way right now so i think that's a good thing and there is some place that i'm still injured and it still hurts but it's not too bad so i'm healthy and i feel good so i'm looking forward for it do do you know if 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 your friend turaboyev is going to be over in, in abu dhabi um <laughs> are you um, looking for a rematch <laughs> yeah actually yeah i do want to do do a rematch of course yeah so yeah. Do, do you know if he's going to be there any information that, on that the last time i saw the um, like the um, people that fight he wasn't in there so no. i i don't think he will come but someday uh, I'm sure. I'm sure you, you you'll get to th- that rematch, and it, it'll mean a lot. I, I'm, uh, you know, because if you get that opportunity to just beat him, it it will mean. Uh, I would imagine a lot to you personally. Now, two more questions for you. What's what are you aiming for at the moment? Because you, you mentioned earlier that you know you're 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 29 years old, which is very young, by the way. It's not old, but you're you're saying it's old. Of course, within the sporting context, it's it's. It may be, it might be considered old, but in, in life, it's very young. What, what are your goals now? What are you looking forward to as, uh, as far as your, your judo? What, what major tournaments are you hoping to, to partake in? And the last question is, what's the best 
recommendation or advice you'd want to give to anybody listening to this who 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 dreams of competing uh, in in judo at, at the highest level like yourself? Uh, um, the first one was um... the, the the first question is what 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 are your goals now? What oh. what are you what's motivating you to compete? And what are your goals in the like say in the next two to four years? Um, the biggest um, one is the next uh, world championship. Um, I want to get the gold. And after that, it will be the Olympics. It will be between me and Shadi. So um, it will be a tough, um, because he's a great uh, judoka. So um, it will be a um, tough way to go to the um, it will be tough to go to the Olympics, but I will. I will want to go to the Olympics and win the gold there, as well. So to get that confidence, I think all the tournaments I would do will be important and know myself more better and um, know how to win the gold because I'm like, yeah. So that's the few years I'm thinking right now. Right on. And uh, obviously right now you're, you're leaving today for the Abu Dhabi Grand Slam. Uh, yeah. how, um, how are you feeling in regards to this tournament? Um, are you prepared? Yes. Um, well, I was preparing for the World Championship. And it's only like a week after that. So my body is still healthy. It's it's a bit tired, but um, I still have a few days to recover. So um, I'm in good shape. So I just want to be focused and um, do my judo. And I want to show my judo. Right on. Kyle, I have one last question for you. What, what's the what's the best advice you would give to, to anyone who's, who's watching this or, or listening to this uh, who, who dreams of, of competing at, at your level? What, what, what advice would you give them in regards to their judo and their development? Uh, hard. Um, I think like, um, everybody will tell you to uh, work hard train hard give everything but that is hard to do for the whole time mm. so like don't be too um hard to yourself and try to enjoy judo that's why you do it and there is some hard moments that you have to get over so um don't be hard to yourself and yeah, I enjoy judo, and I think that's all you can do. And sometimes you do well, sometimes you don't. Like, I had this five, six years not doing well, but mm. now I'm starting to do well. So don't mm. think too much and try to enjoy judo and try to enjoy your life. Powerful words, my friend. Thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. Congratulations uh, <laughs> again on, on winning the silver medal. Uh, we look forward to seeing you compete at, at the Grand Slam, which is what? Uh, this this week, right? This this weekend? It's this weekend, yep. Yeah, two days. Two days and five hours, according to the IJF website. You know how they go, like they break it down and say two yeah. days and five hours. <laughs> All right, yeah. brother. Thank you very much. Have, have, have yourself you. a wonderful day. Cheers. Okay, Bye -bye. thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye.